Good morning, church, and welcome to worship this morning for Multnomah Presbyterian Church. We are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you for spending part of your day with us and hope you had a great Christmas. If you are new to our community or if you're joining us for the very first time, a special welcome to you. If you'd like to connect with our community further, there's a link down in the video description to a virtual visitor card. We would love to, to hear from you. Now, it's good for us to, to be worshiping today as we continue to celebrate the good news of God's love, God's love that is so great, so extravagant that he even came down to, to be with us and to save us in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, today's service is going to look a little bit different. We are going to, to worship our Lord today primarily through, through prayer and, and music and song, and, and I'm going to say a little bit more about that later on in today's service. And of course, today we are taking a one-week break from our Zoom services, but we will be back on Zoom for worship next Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. 2021 is now upon us, which is hard to believe. 
And although there might be a bit of relief this week as we see the sun set on on the year 2020, but we hope that you can join us uh, next Sunday on Zoom for worship at 1030 a.m. Also, if you have it on your heart today to worship our Lord through the givings of tithes and offerings, we would uh, invite you to do so online through our website at moltpresschurch.org, or you can also give through the mail as well. And as I said, we are wrapping up 2020, and we will soon be uh, closing out our financial books as well. So we would be so grateful if you would consider helping us finish this year strong. And uh, we have been so grateful. God has been good. God has been gracious. God has been faithful to our community this year. And on behalf of our, our staff and our leaders, we uh, just want to say thank you to, to the congregation for your amazing support, not only financially, but your gifts of time and talent and, and prayer. Thank you so much for that. We are so grateful. And with that, uh, let's now turn to God. Let's, turn, let's draw near to the one who's already come near to us in Jesus. Church, welcome to worship.
Valentine's Laboratory. Yeah, hey Silas, what? we built this robot, right? We built it together. Do you know why we built it? What? So that God can be with us in the robot. Ooh. Yeah, so God can come down and we can talk to the robot and then it's like we're talking to God. God's in the robot, right? Just like your robot action figure, only God will be in this robot. Um, what do you think of that? He's seen through his eyes. He, I, yeah, he'll, he can see us through his eyes. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's. I don't think you need the robot. I mean, the, the robot's, robot's awesome. really cool. Yeah. It's a really cool robot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think you need the robot because we have God with us all the time. Because first, right, we just celebrated Christmas, and that yes, was we did. that was God with us. Emmanuel was another name for Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Jesus was coming to Earth to be yes. with us. Yes. And then when Jesus left, he left us with the Holy Spirit. We can't see. You're right. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we have the Holy Spirit with us all the time, and that means we can talk to God whenever we want. That was the whole point of Jesus coming to be with us was that there wasn't anything separating us from God anymore that we could be friends with him and we could talk to him whenever we wanted but but you're right we can't see him but can we keep the robot I mean yes you can keep the robot okay and I mean yes. if you wanted to you could talk to the robot but yeah we do talk to the robot you don't need the robot to talk oh no to Silas the robot. is pulling the robot apart no no I'm not Okay, good. But we always have God with I, us. I, I just, I just got him like this, but, but, but the black one is a lobster. It's a lobster. It's a scorpion. <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys have more work to do. Da, 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 da. Maybe you're building I, a I lobster talk, robot next. No, he's talking you. about the scorpion I gave him way back in episode one of Val's Lab. Whoa, this has gone meta. Well, anyway, I just don't want you guys to be worried that you need something to help you talk to God because you can talk to God anytime you want. Okay, but we're going to keep the robot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You like that? Well, as I mentioned earlier in the service, today's message is not going to be a typical one where I preach and you listen, but we are going to instead engage the Word of God together. We are going to listen to the Word of God together, precisely because God is still speaking to us today. And the primary way that God speaks to his people is through the witness of his Word. And as a pastor, I cannot overstate how critical it is to spend time in the Word of God. That we cannot grow, we cannot mature as Christians if we do not commit ourselves to engaging the scriptures. Now, when I first moved to Oregon from, from New York, 
one of the first things that I had to do was go to the DMV to get my title and, and uh, registration transferred and then get a new driver's license and all of that. And of course, I had to take a multiple choice test to ensure that I was fit to drive in the great state of Oregon. So they asked me to review the Oregon driver's manual, which I'm sure all of you have read cover to cover. So I did. I took it and I read it and I ended up learning a lot about how to properly transport a canoe. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I read the manual and I got the information that I needed to know. Uh, I got the right answers and then I went and I passed the test. And I share this with you because sadly, this is how we often read the Bible. So we read the Bible to get information. We read the Bible so that we can find uh, the right answers, the answers to our questions. And don't get me wrong, it's good to, to know what's in, the, what's in the Bible. It's good to know the information. But if we read scripture like a roadmap or an instruction manual, we are, we are missing something. We're missing the reality that this is God's word to us. And his desire when we come to the word is to speak to us and to transform us more and more into the likeness of Jesus. So today, like I said, we're going to do something a little different. I'm, I'm going to lead us through a, a method of reading scripture called Lectio Divina. And you may be familiar with this and you may not. Either way, it's, it's fine. Lectio Divina is it's Latin and it literally means sacred reading. And it's a contemplative way of reading the Bible. Uh, it's a slow reading of the text. Lectio Divina is a practice that slows us down, right, which in our time and in our culture I think is something that's really important. It's something that we desperately need. This is a practice of praying with Scripture by reading it several times, dwelling in the text with the hope and the conviction that God will, will meet us in the reading of his word, that God will speak to us, that God will encounter us through the scriptures. Lectio Divina helps us to listen to God, uh, to rest in him, to be silent before him. Now, a 16th century priest, St. John of the Cross, put it really nicely when he said this. He said, silence is God's first language. Silence is God's first language. So if we want to hear the voice of God, we must be willing to uh, to sit in silence before him. So we are going to, to practice this together today. And the great thing about Lectio Divina is that it can be done in a group setting um, or it can be done individually in devotion times as well. This is a way that I often will read the scriptures, a way that I, you know, prepare for sermons as well. And recently I have read, I have led our, our prayer team, our Tuesday night group, uh, through this practice over Zoom, which has been really powerful as well. So if you're interested in learning more about it, there's a link down in the description where you can, uh, where you can do that um, with some um, just some very uh, practical information about how to incorporate this practice into your own prayer life. Uh, but today we are looking at the first chapter of the Gospel of John. And we are going to hear this passage a total of three times. And in between each reading, we will have times for reflection uh, where you will uh, hear some music and there will be times of silence as well. Uh, but now as we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God, let's take a few moments and just be, be silent before him. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to just indwell this reading of the word. Church, let's pray. Father God, we praise you. We thank you for your word that is a lamp for our feet and a light to our path. Come to us now, God, and do what only you can. Just take this written word and, and turn it into a, a living word. Carry this message deep into our hearts today. We ask you to speak, Lord, for we are listening. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 
Um, Church, let's continue in this time of prayer. And as we listen to the word of God for the first time, I'd invite you to be aware of any word or any phrase that catches your attention in this passage. And remember, this isn't a a time to analyze the passage or ask questions of it. This is not about getting information. It's about experiencing the presence of God. So take this time to simply dwell in the passage and listen intently for a word or for a phrase that, that grabs your attention. This reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace, and truth. So as we continue this time of prayer, um, Heather is going to read the passage a second time. And, And following this reading, I would invite you to consider that word or that phrase, that that part of the passage that really grabbed your attention. Take this time to to reflect on that word, that that phrase so that 
that message may, may sink deeper within. Take this time to reflect. And if there wasn't one thing, if there wasn't one word that, that jumped out at you, then that's okay. Keep listening. Keep, keep resting in the word of God. So let's hear the scripture for the second time. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As we listen to God's word for the third and final time, I would invite you to consider how you might respond to this message. I would invite you to continue to to consider the word and the phrase that you've been reflecting on and and ask God a, a couple of questions. Ask of the Lord, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? And Lord, what would you have me do? Lord, what would you have me do? Because the the word of God seeks to transform our hearts and our actions. So so take this opportunity to respond to God's word by, by asking that question. Lord, what would you have me do? Let's hear our passage for the third time. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. 
the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, friends, as we consider that that question of, Lord, what would you have me do? Let's take a couple of minutes to just sit in silence before the Lord, because after all, silence is God's first language. Let's take a moment to rest in God's presence, and then we'll close our time by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
the Word made flesh, and we've seen His glory. He made His dwelling in the world as the Word made flesh, and we've seen His glory. And in the sending of the Son, grace and truth have come through the one and only. And in the sending of the Son, grace and truth have come through the one and only. In Him was life, that life was light for everyone. The darkness tries, but the light will not be overcome. that shines for everyone has come to the world the light of Christ the only Son has come into the world has come into the world Friends, as we close our, our service, I hope and I pray that this service was, was a blessing and an encouragement to you. I, I hope that if nothing else, it gave you an opportunity just to slow down and to rest in God's presence and to dwell in, in the word of God and the good news of the gospel. And now this day and every day, may you know the love of God. May you know the grace, the mercy, the compassion of Jesus. And may you always know the, the presence, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you friends. Take care. We'll see you next week.